Good afternoon, everyone. It's Gary with Soccer Pro, and today I have the pleasure of having Daniel Berdejo del Fresno with me, and we'll be talking about futsal and the benefits of futsal in today's development scheme for youth soccer players. So welcome, Daniel. Glad to have you here. Could you do me a favor and tell our audience a little bit more about yourself? Hi, Gary. Thank you very much, uh, first for the invitation. For me, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yes, I'm Daniel. I am originally from Spain. So I was born there, I played there, and I went to the university over there, but then I moved to England for my studies. Um, I did a, a PhD in a Manchester Metropolitan University, and I lived basically, I lived eight years in England before I moved to the US, where I live now. I am living now in the Bay Area, in California, and my career has been, you know, I started as a strength and conditioning coach, a sports scientist, and now I am coming into the pathway of coaching. I am here a full-time coach uh, with Bavaria Futsal Club. All right, so you come out of a heavy science background. How did you make that transition from going from a uh, strength and agility coach into being a futsal coach? So when I did... Um, my, my undergraduate in the university, I started to, I really like the strength and conditioning a coaching part, the controlling the training load, the injury prevention, all these things. So I focus on my PhD on that in England. And I started to work with national, uh, with several national governing bodies, with basketball, with hockey, with uh, cycling, with that. And at the same time, I started to work for the for the FA for the Football Association. I was working for them as a sports scientist with the national teams, with the futsal national teams. But I always liked futsal. I played futsal when I was in Spain. I did my coaching courses in futsal. So at the same time, I was the sports scientist for um, the England futsal national teams. I started to coach a local team in Manchester and then just coaching, not, nothing related with the sports science, just coaching the futsal team in Manchester, Manchester Futsal Club. And then from then I went to a different one, Sheffield FC, Sheffield FC Futsal. We, we, we started to be successful. And then I had in 2016, I had the opportunity to come to the United States with a full-time uh, coaching position. And that is why I decided to move away from England. I quit my job over there and I came here just as a, as a coach, not as a sports scientist. The interesting thing about futsal in Chicago, where I'm from, is that we only tend to play it in the winter. When it comes to the summer season, everyone goes outside and they play full field soccer. You are in the Bay Area, which means you could technically play soccer outdoor all year, yet a lot of clubs will go to futsal for development. So what I'm interested in knowing about is how you can take futsal, integrate it into a soccer program, and help these kids get faster, quicker with their touch on the soccer ball as it relates from playing futsal, and then bringing that skill into the soccer game. So that's true. That's true. I know that I've been in Chicago. And I know that uh, it's a big futsal community over there. Um, you have over there the best, the, one of the best coaches in the world. It's a Brazilian guy called uh, Sego. He lives over there. And they have an academy in a town called Joliet. Yep. Which is um, Cadence, Cadence Soccer and Futsal Club. He works over there, so I've been there. And it's completely different. In here, the weather is different. We could... We could um, we could play soccer all year round outside. That, so I, I get the differences. For me, it's not about the weather. It's not about... I really think that the same... And I like to explain this, like the same way that when we are teaching kids to ride a bike, we, we modify the bike and the bike is... Your bike is going to be different from my bike and it's going to be different from a kid. So it's a smaller... And um, we should do the same with, um, with, with soccer. We should modify soccer for kids. We, we should try to adapt the sport to the kids. So even, even if you think about the bike example, 
very, very tiny bikes. We modify the bikes. We modify the bikes and they don't have even pedals. The, the kids, they just use their feet. So I think we should modify the sport. So going into soccer, I really think that futsal or small-sided games will, will bring so many benefits to, to soccer players for the future. Everybody knows that you, you have more touches on the ball, you have more shots, you have more one big ones you, you, there is more passing. So everybody knows that. Uh, and technically, the more you practice, the better you will get, no? So everybody understand that. But for me, something that in, in futsal or in a small-sided games uh, brings to the table is that everybody has seen players in a 9v9 or in a 7v7 that they are not really engaged because the ball is in the other corner of the field. When you play a small or you play reduced size, the 100% of the time, that, the time that you are on the field, you are engaged. And that doesn't, that is here. You are mentally, right. you are engaged. So yeah. you are developing also your mental skills. And that is what, in my opinion, futsal really brings to the table. It's not only the technical aspect, is also the tactical and the mental aspect of the game. That's a great point. You know, everyone knows about the speed of play and the number of touches, but a lot of people don't think about the engagement aspect of exactly what you said. Guy's off in the corner. He's not really engaged. He doesn't have to be. Now, when you look at the ages for futsal, we get people going in soccer at, you know, four or five years old. Do you think that they should be getting into futsal at that same age or waiting earlier later what's your opinion on that so it's it's it's, it's good that question because right now with a, with a friend we are writing a book about a logic our logical progression of course it's our opinion about teaching uh, about teaching soccer and we really think that the basic is the motor skills physical literacy that is what we should start with that and then we really really believe that we should start everything related with ball manipulation. So there is, a, there is an American guy, Tom Bayer, living in, uh, I think it's Jap in Japan, that he has a famous, a famous uh, very famous book, which is Soccer Starts at Home. And basically is that. It's like at your house with your parents, how to manipulate the ball. So at the very, very, very young ages, I think it's you and the relation between you and the ball. And then four or five years old, you have to be focused on that. And then maybe after five, six years old, you can start thinking about playing with in, in, a, in a teen environment. And our progression is we should really focus on 1v1s. Then in the, for, for us, the next step should be 3v3. Then is when we establish the five versus five, and that is when futsal came into the equation, then 7v7, 9v9, and 11v11. And we believe that soccer or football, soccer is a, it's a, it's the same family. It's a big family. It's like a tree. So the top, the top of the, of the tree, the crown, the crown of the tree is soccer. And the 95% of the players, they want to be in that pathway. Yep. In the trunk, in the trunk, we have all these 1v1s, 3v3s, 5v5, 7v7, 9v9s to develop and to help them to achieve to achieve uh, the top. But we also have different branches. One is futsal and the other one is beach, beach soccer that they are under the same umbrella. And in my opinion, you should give our players all the opportunities, different pathways, they benefit each other, and then they decide where where they want to go. It's not a fight between us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the nice thing about futsal is you're in that smaller space. And we have a development center called Soccer Labs where we get a lot of new kids coming in from all these different clubs. And almost 100% of the time, let's say 99.8% of the time, it's the rare child that comes into Soccer Labs that is practiced at keeping that ball tight. I've got a saying there I call puppy dogging. 
And I say, quit chasing the ball. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you're taking these big giant touches and just chasing the ball. You're, you're like a puppy dog chasing the ball. So we've just now called that no puppy dogging, right? So now I want them to get their foot on the ball every step, every step, every step. And certainly out on the field, there's a time and a place for a big giant touch. You know, you get a fast break. There's plenty of green space. Take that big giant touch and it'll increase your speed, right? It'll increase your speed to the net if you're on a fast break. But for the most part, you've got to be able to control the ball. Anyone can take a big giant touch and you don't need much practice to take that big giant touch. So when you start looking at futsal, what are you guys doing? And I'm going to get down into very granular levels here, but what are you guys doing specifically to get these kids to learn how to take a little touch versus that big giant, bam, touch, chase, touch, chase. What are you guys doing in your training to get that tightness in their maneuvering of the ball? Okay, so the first thing, and I really like what you mentioned about um, this, the example that you are working over there about the puppy, the ball. And so when we talk about more ball manipulation, ultimately what we want is we want kids to control the ball and make the ball go where they want to go. We don't want that the ball controls the player. So that, that, that is the, exactly. the analogy. So exactly. you have to control the ball. You have to dictate where the ball goes. And between the small touch and the big touch, at the end, this is, it, it could be like a technical aspect, but it's not a technical aspect. I think it's tactical. Players, they have to realize about the situation and they have to read that they if they have the space, maybe, and there's no defenders, they have to do a big touch and chase the ball because ultimately you want to go forward. Yes. But if there is no space, if there is no space and you do that, either the ball goes out or a defender will take it. So it is about a space recognition. And then, of course, you have to apply the technique. So for me, if you are thinking, if we are thinking about... Um, there is a cycle in learning, which is perception, dec decision, and execution. So the perception, the, the scene, and the decision, perception and decision, this is the tactical aspect. The execution is just the technique. It's just the technical aspect. All right. So I'm going to go again in a granular level, getting down deep. Yes. There's a lot of opportunity for futsal in this area. There are more basketball courts indoors than there are soccer fields indoors. On the flip side, we have more soccer coaches than we have futsal coaches. So what's a great resource? If you want to be a futsal coach, if you want to take your team that you're normally coaching for soccer and then say, hey, look, we're going to join a futsal league in the winter. So we have something fun to do and we want to get a lot of touches on the ball. What's a great way for a soccer coach to make that transition to become a futsal coach so he can go soccer in the uh, summer and then futsal in the winter. Are there good resources out there for that? So yes, there is, there is um, one of the problems with futsal always in, in terms of coaching education, of uh, educating is like, because it's a South American sport, all the resources, they were either in Portuguese or in Spanish. So I know that for years, it has been difficult for non-speakers of Spanish or, English or Portuguese to get them. But right now, and especially after this pandemic, there is a lot. So the first thing, there is FIFA and UEFA. They have a, a futsal manual that is free and you can download it in a PDF. And, and there is so much information over there. Then... I also know that there is here in the United States, there is an online futsal coaching uh, certification. And it is, it is very cheap. And I think it's even supported by um, the US Soccer Federation. I also know that one of, the, one of the futsal associations in the United States, they are now delivering online courses as well. Uh, me personally, I have two books in English mm -hmm. in uh, about futsal, and both of them they are free. These are books that uh, you've written. 
Yes, there are books that I've written, and both of them are free. You can um, you can download them in a PDF uh, format, completely free, from my from my from my personal uh, blog or website. Well, what's um, the hold and don't, don't go any further because I think that's a really good point. What is your blog? Where can they go get these? Because I think when people hear that there's a great resource, they're going to want it. So, what is the URL of your blog? It's like it's, it's a blog, uh, blogspot, uh, blogspot uh, blog, and it's my name, Daniel Verdejo del Fresno.com. Okay. Well, tell you what, I'll make sure and put that into this video so people don't have to uh, search around for it and they'll go get your book. I'm going to give you two questions here. What is the number one thing that all new futsal coaches should do? And then what is the one thing that you wish you didn't do when you were first starting to coach futsal? The first, the first one is, I really think coaches, they need to let kids play. What you do, what you do when you are coaching kids basically could mark them for the rest of their life. So it's super, super important that at the end, you understand that when you are coaching kids, you are teaching them. You are more than a teacher than a coach. And the, the, the emotional aspect is key. You have to engage with them. You have, they have to enjoy the practice. They have to have fun. This is, for me, now the priority. All the, the, the technique, tactic, uh, playing games, this is, this is the second thing. The, for me, it's like we won. I always, I always say something. When, when, when I start a season and I have the, the meeting with my parents, what I my objective number one of the season is that at the end of the season, every single kid wants to come back for the next season. Because that means that we are making sure that they, they, they enjoy and it's good for, for everything. That is that is my, my thing about coaching. And I don't know about, about the negative about the negative thing that I wish. I didn't do when I was coaching years ago. It's difficult, but well, mostly about no. futsal, though. I'm I'm kind of looking at that tactical level. You know, there's a certain type of training that you've done, and then there's some training. And I've done this myself at soccer labs. I've done some sessions where I thought, like, oh, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> that was a, you know that was a disaster. Yes, I, I now with with time, it's something I realized that something that I call fundamentals. So the offensive and the defensive fundamentals individually are basic. So if you are able to defend with the right foot, if you are able to defend with the left foot, if you are able to shoot with both um, the one by ones like fundamentals, we are missing that. And I, and I did that because we focus too much in systems, in formations, in the whole structure of the in, in 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 the whole team, when I think we can do that later on, I think the fundamentals is is key, and I did that myself. Um, you think about the team, you think about tactics, you think about uh, how to play together and a rotation between the four players, and then years later you realize that, for example, an 18 years old player is missing something that is fundamental. Like, for example, to be able to shoot with the left foot. And then you think, okay, but did I work enough when I, w when I was working with that player 10 years ago? So something that I would, I would recommend to everybody is focus on the fundamentals and go step by step. In the same way that, the same way that we, are, we, are, we are learning to write, we are not writing a book or you are, we are not writing an essay or even sentences. We are starting with just writing a letter, then two letters together, like a syllable, then a word, then a sentence. So we have a progression for that. Same with futsal. Yeah, that's a really great point about the two-footed soccer. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And when you think about the space limitations of the futsal court versus the 
available space on a soccer field, it's a lot easier to cheat on a soccer field and only be a one-footed soccer player. A lot more difficult to be a one-footed player on the futsal court. So that's really a great reason to get out there and play futsal because it's going to force you to get onto that weak foot and either you're going to get it or you're going to lose the ball. Exactly. Because, you know, in futsal, in a small-sided game, the time you have with the ball is limited and is less than in, in soccer. Yep. The pressure, the pressure will arrive uh, sooner. Mm-hmm. Then the space is limited. So you have less space to do the same thing. And sometimes if there is no space on the left, you have to go to the right. Yeah. Or if there is no space on the right, you have to go to the left. Or as you said, you lose the ball. Right. So where do you see the futsal league going this spring? Do you feel like it's going to open up in your area or is it still a little on the fence? Because here it seems like it's opening up. Here in Chicago, they're opening bars and restaurants. So it appears as though spring seasons are all going to normalize. But what are you seeing in your area, in the Bay Area? So you know that in California, it's very restricted state. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the moment, we are practicing. We are practicing um, outdoor, not indoor. When when we are practicing, we have to keep social distance. So that means we cannot even do a 1v1 because mm-hmm. there is contact. We have to avoid contact. They are talking that if we are lucky, maybe midway of spring, maybe we can play some games. Which mm-hmm. I think we are talking about April, May. But they are also thinking that the games, they should be within the same county or I don't know. It's, it's because we are not practicing. We are not even allowed to practice. Yeah. Well, that's kind of disappointing to hear, actually. I'm a little bit more optimistic that we'll see this coming back. I was hoping you would be providing better news than that. But anyhow, no. I mean, it, I, I really feel like the more states that open up, the more the rest of the states are going to have to open up, whether they want to or not. And I'm just going to cross my fingers that happens. So yeah. let's jump ahead, though, and tell people how they can get involved in your program. If they want to get involved in a good futsal program and they're out in the Bay Area, how can they reach you and get started with you guys? You know, they can reach us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on our website, bayareafutsalclub.com. So uh, uh, bayareafutsalclub.com, right? Exactly. Okay. So we have all the social platform. They they can contact uh, there through email, through through even through uh, through phone. My my phone number is there, and they can see what we offer on the website. We have the different programs that we offer, and if uh, hopefully hopefully we will be able to use the gym uh, soon. Do you play or practice outside in outdoor basketball courts, or are are all your practices and games indoors? Usually we practice uh, indoor, but just because of this, we are trying to find basketball courts outdoor that we can use. And we are talking with cities that, that they give us like the permits to use the, the outdoor basketball courts to basically use them for the futsal, for the futsal uh, camps. And are you guys running boys programs and girls programs? And what ages are you running? We are running uh, boys, we are running girls, and also we have a men's, a men's uh, team mm-hmm. that I coach also the men's team that we participate around the country and in, the, in international tournaments. But we have U8 to the men's team. Wow. On the on the on the male on the male side, on the female we have just girls, uh, UA to maybe U14. We don't have uh, the female the female team yet. One of my objectives is hopefully to have a female team soon too. Yeah, it can be a little harder. Well, that sounds pretty exciting that you've got a national caliber team. How far are you taking this? It sounds pretty high level. So um, now with the pandemic, we have been one year without doing anything, but. Before the pandemic, we were traveling to different an international tournament that happens every year in Hawaii mm-hmm. with teams from Japan, from, from Brazil. So we always travel there. We always go to different tournaments in our area. And at the same time, we always travel to the national, the national championships. So I think the last one was in, um, in Atlantic City, so on the East Coast. And are you guys seeing a good level of success? Yes, we 
We are good. I, I cannot good? say. I cannot now you don't say, like to brag, I, right? <laughs> yeah, but I cannot say that we are not. Um, we are. Co- we are co- a competitive team. We have done good things. Um, I mean, I just kind of assumed that it would be a good team because it, it, your area is a very competitive area for soccer and futsal. Yes, yes. I, I, I have to admit that um, I agree. The soccer in California, you know, is very competitive. So yep. just because of that also in futsal, we are very, very um, competitive. We have good players. And my captain, for example, uh, Lee, Lee Mitchell, now is um, is with the U.S. Futsal National Team. Hopefully, um, hopefully they will be able to play the CONCACAF that was cancelled last year and try to qualify for the next uh, Futsal World Cup. Um, mm. It's supposed to happen now in uh, at the end of April, May in Guatemala, but let's see. Well, Daniel, I really do appreciate you taking time here to talk to us. Your website is Bay Area Futsal Club. If you're interested in getting into a good futsal program, go to the Bay Area Futsal Club.com website. Find out more information. There's women's programs, there's boys' programs. It goes from eight to senior men's. So if you're looking for good competitive futsal, Bay Area Futsal Club.com is the place to start. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Soccer Pro, for uh, having me here. It has been a pleasure. All right. Well, you have a great day, Daniel, and uh, we'll catch up in the future. All right. Yep. Thank you. Definitely. Bye-bye.